Hey, it's Jamie from jamieedwards.com again, and today I want to ask you a question. Why are you making programming harder? Why am I making programming harder? Why are we as software developers and the whole industry making programming harder maybe than it needs to be? I want you to imagine for a moment that you join a new software company. During the interview process, the hiring manager and the recruiters told you they're using the latest hot technology that you're really excited about using. But you get in there, you're on that project, and as you start to look at the code, you start to explore the way that the solution's been put together, you notice this one developer seems to have done something in a way that I think isn't the right way to do it. Or maybe there's five different ways that people are accessing the database or some data store. Or maybe there's a stack of 10 different technologies you've never used before, and they all seem like they make the solution a Frankenstein big mess. Well, if you've ever been in that situation, I want to challenge you a little bit in this video to be open to some of what I'm going to share with you to maybe think a little bit harder about how you might be contributing to this problem. Because I know in my career, it was really easy for me to bitch and moan about how everybody else wasn't coding the way I wanted them to and thinking that the complexity of the solutions that we build when we program or we develop software was really because other people weren't as good of a software developer as maybe I considered myself to be. But today I'm going to share some information with you about just the industry, the evolution of technology, and the mindset that we often find ourselves in that I think many of us are actually being brainwashed to think we need to make these solutions harder than they really need to be. So if you look back at the history of technology, and specifically programming languages, which many of us use today, one of the first programming languages I learned in my career when I went to college over 20 years ago was assembly language. And in assembly language, there's only a few instructions or commands that you need to learn. But because of that, getting the code to do anything takes a lot of code. So when I learned some higher order languages, things like basic and Java, I learned that there were concepts that we came up with, and you're familiar with this, I'm sure as well too, that were supposed to make it easier to program by kind of hiding or abstracting those details. So somebody would write a function or a method call, and you as a software developer would just need to know, here's the method I call to do some work, and it would sort of hide a whole bunch of lines of code behind it, which was supposed to make your job easier. So as more people started using these higher level languages, libraries became popular. Before libraries, one of the first projects that I joined right out of college, there was still a lot of development being done in C and in C++. And while these are great languages, there's a lot of code written in these today, this was to build web applications. So people were just trying to surface things out on the internet to a browser and using C and C++, I mean, it would take like three lines of code just to allocate a string and put a value into it. So depending on the problem you're solving in your software development solution, the language that you choose can make it either simpler or more complex to implement or solve a problem. And you probably know this out there, but there's something interesting that started to happen around 2000 to 2005, which is that more languages started arriving on the scene that didn't just have easier syntax, they actually had more complicated syntax. So if you think back to one of the earliest programming languages you may have learned, maybe it was Java, maybe it was C Sharp or Ruby, a typical object-oriented programming language. Almost all the languages have a simple way of representing objects, object-oriented programming, right? And the relationships between objects and simple statements like for loops and things like that. All the stuff we learn in college or on our first few software projects. But if we look at how those languages evolved, they started to get things like decorators and attributes and all kinds of other little geeky aspects of the syntax that were supposed to make it more powerful and easier to use. But one of the things I want to have you think about a little bit here and just to check yourself and think about the industry as a whole, how this is affecting us is 
Do you ever get the feeling when you're writing code, you look at your code and it looks like art to you and you're like really feeling proud? Wow, I can write really cool code. And it almost looks like hieroglyphics to you and you feel like some pride and some self-worth and wow, I can understand this and this is really complicated and I'll bet there's other people that this would look really complicated to. Now, that's a somewhat elitist and stupid attitude. And I think as I've gotten more mature in my career, I don't fall into this as much. But I will tell you, in the first probably five years of my career, I definitely fell into that attitude, at least subconsciously, where, you know, my mom would come to visit in the house or my wife would be walking by the computer and one of them would look at the computer and, and look at the screen where I'm writing code and be like, wow, I can't believe you can understand that. And I would start to feel some pride in you know what, I am smart. I really do know some stuff. And, you know, you fast forward a number of years past that, and that started to make its way into the solutions. And actually what it ended up doing was making development more complex and harder, actually, just because of my desire to feel like I'm smart or intelligent or brilliant or can use the latest, greatest stuff. So around the 2000s to 2005 time period, one thing I noticed as a software developer was an explosion in new languages and frameworks. And while I really love technology innovation, I'm sure you do if you're watching this video too, I really got honestly frustrated with all of a sudden a hundred different new variants on doing model view controller, for example, or 10 different logging frameworks that all seem to do the same thing as far as functionally what it does for the project, but it's a little bit different way of doing it. And I think many of us as software developers, we fall kind of into this special snowflake syndrome. We feel like we want to put our stamp on a problem that people are trying to solve with software. And so we go out and create a library or we go out and create a framework and we think that's going to make us popular in the industry. You know, maybe we look up to David Heinemeier Hansen or or other people who have created really popular frameworks and we're like, I want to be looked up to like that too. But I think we need to be a little bit more careful as our careers move forward that we don't fail to realize that by introducing our little framework or our stamp on something, we're actually making it harder for everybody else on the team to potentially get work done. And one of the biggest ways you can see this is I will sometimes come onto a new software project or I'll start up a new software project and I'll be working with a whole bunch of other programmers or software developers and they've all got different backgrounds. Maybe this is a Node.js project or a Ruby project. It could be any language. But you have people with varying levels of experience. They might all have the same exact number of years of experience, but their experience of how to apply that language or that technology on their problem because of the business they work for or maybe how they think is totally different. And so sometimes you'll get into a code base or you'll start solving a problem and you'll be like, why the heck did this person write code to do something that I know exists in a library somewhere else? Or why did this person choose to use attributes when I would have used methods or you know any aspect of the syntax or the features of the programming language or the framework you're using? Well, I think part of the reason that that continues to be a problem is because there's this always expanding way that people want to represent solving what I would consider many of the same computer science problems, but with their own special framework, their own little stamp on it. And I think we need to just kind of sit back a little bit and think about, is that really helping us in our career? Is that actually helping us not be stressed out? Or is that maybe making it harder to hit deadlines? And it's actually making things continue to be more complex when they don't really need to be. So why are you making programming harder? Why am I making programming harder? Why do we fall into this? Well, I think the first reason is we buy the industry noise that to get a job, we need to know the latest, greatest framework or technology. Now, if you've been in software development for any period of time, you know that you can't just learn one framework or one technology and make a 20 year career out of it. However, I think many of us get a couple years of experience in a technology and we start to get bored with it. And we look at what maybe recruiters are putting people into positions for, or what other people on our project are excited about. 
And all of a sudden we think, if I don't learn this new technology, I'm not going to be able to find a job. Well, I live in Austin, Texas, and I'll tell you this, C Sharp as an example is an old programming language at this point. It, it came out around 2000 or 1999. So it's, a, it's almost a 20 year old language. And there's more positions here in Austin to fill than they can find people. And it's not because people don't know it. It's because a lot of people don't want to work on C Sharp anymore. They want to work on Node.js. They want to work on Rust. They want to use different languages. And while I think that's cool, and I think it's cool that, you know, if, if you're in your career, you want to always grow, you're actually putting pressure on yourself when you constantly get addicted to learning new frameworks and new technologies. Because if you think about it, one of the biggest complaints that people have in software development is that they have to work too many hours and they have a hard time hitting deadlines. Well, if you start a project and you start to get asked to estimate work and you're not very good at it, it's brand new to you, what do you think that's going to cause you to do? You're going to have to study at home. You're going to have to work overtime. And so I think there's a disconnect between the frustration that we have oftentimes as programmers because we feel like we're not given enough time and the business is too complex. And maybe project managers and, and people that run the company have these unrealistic expectations of us and it's really harder than they realize. But really, we're making it harder than it needs to be because we're jumping into new technology stacks that sure might be great. We might want to learn those and they may make us more valuable in the industry. But if we're not really competent with them when we start a new project, we're honestly setting ourselves up for failure or at least way more pressure than we need to be in. The second thing I think we do that causes us to make programming way harder than it needs to be is what I'd say is intellectual masturbation. We want to learn new things because it strokes our ego. We think by knowing this amazing technology that has 50,000 moving parts and 20 different patterns, we can lord it over people and look how smart of an architect or a programmer I am. And then we get frustrated when our team can barely produce anything. They're just trying to get a login screen done or just to say hello world, they need to learn 12 new concepts. If you want to actually move ahead in your career and really be rewarded, it's about delivering results. It's not about your mind. I've worked with many people and since I've gotten into consulting, I've been very successful with making more money simply because I'm able to come into a code base or come onto a company and learn the patterns that are in place and crank out features where the business finds value because I'm delivering results way quicker than other people because I don't get hung up on, I need to put my special stamp on it and I need to use the framework I want to use most and I need to use the technology that I want to use the most. No, I start to deliver results for the business and then the business starts to learn, Jamie's someone we can count on that gets stuff done. And that's what's going to lead to promotions. That's what's going to lead to recognition. That's what's going to lead to raises. The fourth thing that I think we often do that causes programming to be much harder than it needs to be is we try to insert new architectural concepts or ones we're excited about into a code base or into a software development solution that don't make sense because we've just convinced ourselves that we want to use it and there must be some way to use it. I'll give you an example. I was working at a consultancy once where there was another team than the one I was on and they were building a solution for a client. And this was a tiny dinky little client that was building a, a product that was going to be used by 200 of their customers. And this solution, this code base that this team was building, they introduced an enterprise service bus into it. And if you know anything about an enterprise service bus, it's an architecture where when different things happen in software products or components, instead of them directly calling each other, they have a way to publish and subscribe. I don't want to get into too many details, but it's it adds a lot of complexity to the code base. Now, for the right architectural problem, it can solve a lot of complexity, but this team chose to use it simply because they knew how it worked, they thought it was exciting, and they 
basically try to use it as a one size fits all solution. You've heard the expression, when all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Well, this is something that I think we have to be careful about as software developers, especially if you're someone out there like, you know, I did this earlier in my career, the first, the first eight years of my career, I was at the same company. If you've mostly been solving one business problem and you've been using one tech stack to do that and one set of patterns and you go on to a new business with a new problem and maybe it's the same tech stack, you can fall into thinking, I need to follow the same architecture when it doesn't make any sense. So be careful out there. Don't fall into what I have. If, if you're actually trying to make your job simpler and you want to make more money and you want to be less stressed out and you want to be able to hit your deadlines better and you want people to reward you better, then be careful that you're not getting caught up in how smart you are and how many frameworks you know and how many patterns you know and trying to apply them to every problem just to show off to everybody about how smart you think you are and how many different aspects of technology you can demonstrate because ultimately i found that will often kill the productivity of the team and it doesn't matter how great you are at producing value with that framework if everybody else on your team can't keep up with it and you start to blame them all and be like well you're a shitty programmer and you're not a good programmer at the end of the day they're not going to like working with you very much they're going to throw you under the bus at the first opportunity they get and at some point the business is going to realize the reason this project is failing is because our tech lead or one of our programmers has created an architecture that's way more complicated than this solution really needs. So are you making programming harder than it needs to be? What are some of the ways that you've coped with all of our desire to grow and learn new things, but not be seen by other people as wrapped up in our intelligence meaning everything and that leading us to design solutions that are just way too complicated and harder than they need to be? Leave me some comments below. If you're new to my YouTube channel, please subscribe, click the little bell icon, and you'll be notified when I post new videos. I'm also on four podcast platforms if you'd rather listen to this as a podcast, Google Play, Stitcher, iTunes, and SoundCloud, and you can like me on Facebook. So until next time, thanks.